All right, so how many of you have enjoyed the Star Trek convention? <laughs> oh, not that data. I see. All right, well, today we're going to be talking about exploring and using new releases of Tableau and Tableau Prep, and I'm excited to, uh, to do this repeat session. That's me, if you didn't recognize me. I am Joshua Milligan. Uh, I am a principal consultant at Technion Data Solutions. Uh, which is a partner of Tableau. And so I work with people who are doing everything end-to-end -end from building data warehouses to doing predictive, advanced analytics. Uh, but I get to focus day in and day out using Tableau Desktop, Tableau Prep, and a little bit of online and server to serve my customers and help them see and understand their data. So that's what I love to do. Uh, there's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me at any time. I am a Tableau Zen Master. I am a, actually a five-time Tableau Zen Master. This is my fifth year. And so that's an incredible honor. It's also uh, very humbling to be with that group of people and to realize there are a lot of incredible and smart people out there. But the best part about it is, is that Tableau gives me uh, a rock. And so I've collected these over the years. And uh, one of my colleagues gave me a little sand garden where I could put these rocks and rake the sand and feel like a true Zen master. I have written a book, which is currently in its third edition, Learning Tableau 2019 is the, is the latest. So it's a great book if you're just starting out or even if you've been using Tableau for years, what I tried to do was to just lay out the foundational principles of Tableau and then build on those, the things that I wish I had known when I got started. Uh, so that's learning Tableau. Here's a picture of my children. So a very important part of my life are these four here. This picture is a year old, a little bit over a year old. So the baby is now a year old and about this close to walking. Uh, the two-year-old is now three and about this close to using the restroom. <laughs> and the other two are a year older as well. Now, my wife saw this slide and she said, what, no picture of me? I said, would you like your picture there? She said, no. <laughs> so, you get to see my children. Now, when I was their age, I grew up watching reruns of Star Trek, the original series. And I loved it. To me, they weren't reruns. To me, they were new and exciting. Every week, it was a new civilization, a new life form to discover. And, and I just loved that sense of wonder and awe of what are they going to discover next. Well, when I grew up, I still like Star Trek, if you couldn't tell. But I also fell in love with Tableau. And I feel that same sense of awe and wonder as I work with Tableau, exploring new data sets, making new discoveries, and uncovering new insights. But I also feel that every time that Tableau releases a new version of the product. So every time there's a new version of desktop or now Tableau Prep, which comes out monthly, I, I am just, wow, look at this. This feature is amazing. But there's so much to discover. So how do we, uh, how do we handle that? And we'll talk about that today. I imagine that if they made a television series about Tableau like they did about Star Trek, it would start out something like this. Sound? It's on, but we're not getting it. All right, I'll, I'll narrate it. Tableau, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the data analyst. It's ongoing mission to seek out new features and new functionality. to boldly go where no analyst has gone before. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we lost something with the sound there. But I feel that same sense of awe and wonder. Everything changes, even the software that we use, but the change that I've experienced with Tableau is incredible. 
So here's what we're going to do today. Here's how we're going to proceed. We're going to start by talking about how do we find out about these new features. Uh, there are tons of new features. Where do we find them? How do we learn them? And then we'll boldly explore some new features. So some of these you have seen, perhaps even uh, with the devs on stage, but we'll, uh, we'll dive into them a little bit. And then we'll talk about what to do with the discoveries that we make. Let's start out with finding the new features. Where do we look? One place, and don't worry about capturing every URL or resource that I share, I'll put it on, on my blog, uh, so don't worry about writing it down, but I love the new features page. Uh, every time Tableau releases a new version of the product, they will update this page with screenshots or even animations of how these new features work, as well as descriptions, and it's a great overview of, of a lot of the new features that come out in Tableau. Not all of them, uh, sometimes you'll find some as you use Tableau, uh, and you'll discover some features along the way that weren't even mentioned. Another place is the release notes. How many of you have uh, read the release notes that Tableau puts out there? Okay, a few of you. I love these because Tableau, for every product, prep, desktop, server, online, bridge, the new data management studio, uh, all of these products are here, and for every version, for every release, you can read about what new features they included, what bugs they fixed, uh, and what new capabilities are now available. So if you haven't read these, they're actually a lot of fun to read. Be like Scotty. Read the release notes, or at least skim them. This is a great one. The pre-release program. How many of you have been involved in the pre-release program? A few of you. Now, as Tableau customers, all of you can go to this website, prerelease.tableau.com, and sign up, and you'll get invited to explore new versions of Tableau before they even come out. So you'll get beta versions, maybe even a special invite to look at some of the uh, new features that are coming out soon. And so that can be a lot of fun. And then you can give Tableau feedback and tell them how it works for you, how it doesn't work for you, what else you'd like to see. And then the community forums. Any of you use those? Yeah, so quite a few of you. Now, I started using the forums as a way of asking questions and saying, I don't know how to do this in Tableau, and then someone would answer me. And then, as I started to see, okay, wow, there are people here sharing their knowledge and expertise. As I started to grow in my knowledge and expertise, I found it was a great way to pay that forward to the community. Uh, and then I learned a lot doing that because I would either get affirmation for, hey, that answer does work, or I'd get general correction of, uh, no, you actually could do it this way. And, uh, and so I learned a lot just interacting. But it's also a great place to learn about new features in Tableau. You'll see, you'll see people asking about them, and you'll even see release news there, as well as an email list for Tableau prep. Other ways that you can learn about new features. Social media is a great way, so find, find the people who are uh, on Twitter or LinkedIn, and they're, they're talking about new features. Uh, I saw uh, a tweet by Kent Martin, who's a program manager, and he does a lot of the geospatial stuff with Tableau, and he tweeted out something about a new feature that allowed you to geospatially join any data sources that you wanted, whether it was a spatial file or not. And I thought, wow, I didn't even know you could do that. So I tried it out, it worked, I thought, wow, that solves a lot of problems, so I wrote a blog post about it. And other people are writing blog posts about new features and things that you can do with them, so that's a great way to find out about things. And finally, download the latest version and just start exploring. Now, how many of you would tell me that at your organization, you're at least a version or two behind? Okay, I hear that a lot. Lots of people say, well, we're still on 2018.2. Yeah, I know, I feel your pain. I've got clients who are the same way. But guess what? Tableau, officially, in their licensing, now, always talk to your Tableau rep first before you make any key decisions, but right here on their website, in their knowledge base, can I use Tableau Desktop to install on my second computer? And the answer is, 
Yes, you can. If you have a license, it's per user. You can use it on your work computer, and even if it's a version or two behind, you can go home and install the latest on your home computer and play around, find out what Tableau can do, then take it back to your colleagues and make them jealous. Yeah, one, per, it's per, per user, so one, one person, but you can use it on two machines. Let's explore. We'll do that by looking at a few scenarios. Hopefully not of the no-win kind. All right, new feature. I was excited to see this one at uh, Devs on Stage. Animation. It's currently in pre-release. Now, how many of you are excited about animation? All right, most. Hopefully, after I show you this, everyone will be. All right, this is not animation. Uh, this is the way that Tableau has worked for years. Let's say you have a fleet of starships and you want to, uh, you want to correlate the phaser charge with the shield uh, efficiency, and you're changing filters, so you're looking at it over time. Well, right now, the dots just disappear and reappear wherever that new filter value uh, determines that they should be. Now, by the way, I know that when you go to evaluate this session, there's going to be a question on there that says, how relevant was this for you? First of all, Star Trek is always relevant. <laughs> but second of all, if it helps you to think of this in terms of profit ratio or, or employee efficiency, you can do that, and that will work just fine. But this is not animation. Not, not really. I mean, I've animated it here in PowerPoint just to, just to show it. But this is animation. Now, I don't just see the dots disappear and reappear. Now I get to see where they were at the previous filter value and where they are now. I, and it helps me so much mentally. It takes such a burden off of me. I can actually think about, or even without thinking about it, I'm seeing how far did it move? Where did it move? Which direction did it move? It's answering so many questions for me without me even having to think about it. And there are some features that are just like that. They just work and they just make life so much better with Tableau. But there are also features that are total game changers and change the paradigm completely. This feature is both because it works without me having to think about it but it also changes the way I tell a story. So imagine if I'm up here narrating and I'm telling you about the Klingon battle and how that affected shield efficiency and then we move on and it's, it's helping me tell the story in a different way than I ever could before. Or imagine something like this, a line chart showing the shield recharge rate using various different uh, optimization techniques. It's great if you can just see the shape of the line, but it's even better if you can see that shape change fluidly as you change the filter. All right. And, and if it helps you to think of uh, employee, uh, whatever you want to relate it to in the business world is great. All right, enough of, uh, enough of PowerPoint. Who wants to see it in action? Yeah, let's, let's take it and look at it in Tableau. And I'm going to use this data set here, uh, on-screen Star Trek deaths. Wonderful data set. I've got, uh, I've got the name of the person who died. Uh, I've got the position. I've got the season, the episode. And then I'm really curious about the shirt color, because I've always heard that you don't want to wear a red shirt if you're on Star Trek, which is why I chose gold today. And then the cause of death. How many of you have seen a bar chart race? OK, a few. These are becoming really popular. I, I, maybe it's just me. I clicked on one on YouTube, and now my YouTube channel is full of them. But you see the bars as uh, you know, the most popular operating system. And it starts out in the 1980s. And, and you see the bars grow, and then they switch places. And, and it's really kind of cool. Or you can see the population of the world, or, or things like that. Let's build one with this data set in Tableau. All 
All right, so the only thing I've done is just a little bit of pre-formatting to save some time, but otherwise we're gonna build this from scratch. I'm gonna start by taking the, uh, the title of the episode and placing that on pages. So the pages shelf is how we might have thought of doing animation before, but it wasn't truly animated, or at least not the way that it is now. But it does give me some playback controls and I can start to, uh, to move through the episodes and you can see I've got the title uh, set up to show the current page value. So we'll, uh, we'll play through that in a minute after we've built it out. I'm gonna take the uh, running number of deaths and I'm gonna place that on columns to, uh, to build out the bar chart. And then I'm gonna take short color and place that on color so that we can actually see. And you can even see as I'm building the viz, there's a little bit of animation. So again, helping you just cognitively see how things are changing, even as you're dragging and dropping and building a viz. All right, normally, if I was gonna create a side-by-side uh, -side, uh, bar chart, I would put short color on rows. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because the pages makes it so all the data is there, and that means that it's going to determine the ordering based on the entire data set. So instead, I want that to be dynamic. I want the bars to change over time. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a calculation here. I'm gonna use the rank calculation in Tableau, and I'm gonna actually use the rank unique to make sure they always end up uh, in a unique spot, and we'll do the sum of the running number of deaths. So that calculation, on rows, but I don't want it to be continuous because that gives me, that gives me a continuous axis. I want it to be discrete to give me headers. And then I need to uh, compute using shirt color so that it's giving me the number of deaths per, per shirt color there. Uh, we don't need to see nulls, I'll hide those. We don't even actually need to see the, um, the headers for any of these. So I'm gonna hide the headers and at this point, we're ready to, uh, to watch our race. And so we go through episode by episode, and you can see if I'm wearing a blue uniform in the first few episodes, that's not so great. But gold is catching up. There's red, sh the first red shirt death wasn't until episode 10. Uh, gold is not looking great, so I probably shouldn't appear in the first half of, of season one. And we keep going. Space Seed, that was a great episode. And uh, okay, there's red shirt deaths came up just a little bit, and we are just now into season two, so actually, wearing a gold shirt, I'm kind of getting nervous. Uh, we're, uh, we're halfway through season two now. And finally, the red shirts have, have overtaken. And uh, we'll see if that stays true. The Trouble with Tribbles, great episode right there. Nobody died on screen there, but lots of people died in that episode. More red shirt deaths. More red shirt deaths. I think the writers must have gotten in a funk. We're into season three, more red shirt deaths. Nobody died for a while in season three. And then there's more red shirt deaths. Red shirt and blue. And we're at the end of the series. It was canceled. And so, having worn a gold uniform, I'm feeling okay about my, my shirt selection, especially if I, uh, if I was to appear in the third season, I think I'd be just fine. So that is one way that we can leverage animation to tell a story and to tell it dynamically. So a great feature in Tableau. I'm incredibly excited about it. We've got some other new features to consider today. Let's turn our attention to Tableau Prep. Tableau Prep comes out on a monthly release cycle and so there's lots of new features that are constantly coming out. We've got the ability now to connect to cloud files. That's in the 2019.4 beta. R and Python scripts, we've got the ability to leverage those in our Tableau prep flows. 
uh, as of 2019.3. And level of detail calcs. Officially in the 2019.4 beta, but unofficially, if you have 2019.3, you can actually use them there. They're just not documented. And Tableau is so efficient at getting out new versions that even as I put this uh, presentation together, they released 2019.4, so I had to come back and cross out the beta. It's no longer beta, it's now released. I wanna show you all of these features today, and I wanna do it with this data set. It's a data set that has every episode of the original series of Star Trek, along with the actor who appeared, or all the actors who appeared in that episode, and the character that they played. So you can see I've got episode order, episode title, and so on. Now, as you work with these data sets, especially in Tableau Prep, you might start to need to shape your data according to certain questions you wanna answer later on, such as how many episodes did a character appear in? Now, for a single character, that's not maybe too hard to figure out, but then what if I want to group those together and say, well, characters that appeared in less than five episodes were just occasional, or, or these are the regular uh, cast members. So even some, some more uh, level of complexity on top of that question. Other questions might be like, what was an actor's first episode, or when did a character last appear in the series? And so those are the types of questions that if I was using Tableau Prep uh, previously, there was an old way of doing things. And I say old because Tableau Prep's only like a year and a half old. But this is how I used to have to answer those questions. I would start with the data and then I would build an aggregation. So I'd create an aggregation step. Here I'd say the number of episodes per actor. But if I wanted to go back to the original uh, grain of the data, the original level of detail, I'd have to join that back in, do this kind of self-join, kind of a weird shape there that it creates a triangle in the flow. And then I could maybe conclude with another step to build out any more complexity on top of that answer. And so that was the old way. And if I had a lot of these questions, I would have to build out lots of these triangles in my flow, and it got kind of fun, but then, then you'd go back and you'd be like, whoa, what was, I, what was I trying to do there? Now, there's a new way. And let's take a look at that. So the new way in Tableau Prep, I'll open Tableau Prep here. And we'll take a look at several new features along the way. The first of those will be the ability to connect to cloud files. How many of you use uh, data in the cloud, maybe like Google Sheets or, uh, or something like that? So yeah, a few, quite a few of you are, are doing that. So previously, I had no way to even connect to Google Sheets, which is something that the developers knew everybody would like to do. So in the latest version, I connect to data. I won't find Google Sheets exactly, but I do find the ability to connect to Google Drive, and that's going to let me get there. So it's gonna authenticate in my browser. And once I tell it that Tableau is allowed to access my Google Drive, I can close my browser, and now I'm gonna get this, uh, this dialog box asking me what I want to connect to on Google Drive, including Google Sheets. So here's a Google Sheet, and I will connect to it. This is that data set that has all the episodes of, of Star Trek. Notice this, I'll call this feature out as well, the, uh, the navigation box down here. Uh, not too exciting when I, have, when I have a little flow. You'll see as I build out the flow, it starts to, uh, starts to show the flow. Uh, when I get a really complex, large flow that takes up more, than, more of the screen, this is a great way of just dragging and dropping to navigate through the flow. Uh, it's also got some zoom controls, which are great, and that's new uh, for this control, but there's a feature there that's been there for a while, and that's if I hold down on control and hit plus or minus, I can zoom in or out, which is great when I'm trying to show it on a projector like this. Maybe too much there, but I can zoom out a little bit. So here's my data set. I, uh, I'm gonna look at episode order by detail. 
and see there's the numeric order there. I've got the episode title and the actor and then the character. So if my question was something like, how many episodes did an actor appear in? Instead of building out that crazy triangle shape in the flow, I'm just going to create a calculated field. I'm going to call it number of episodes per actor. And just like I would in desktop then, I'll create a fixed level of detail calculation at the level of actor. And in this case, I'll do a count distinct of the episode title, just in case an actor appeared in an episode as maybe more than one character. I don't want to count them twice. Now, I was uh, really excited to see in devs on stage, this is all going to be visual eventually. But for now, I can write it as a calculation. So I'll save. And I get the number of episodes per actor. I might want to see that by detail. I notice that there are a lot of actors who are kind of just one time. Star Trek wasn't their thing. They appeared once, and they said, nah, never again. Or maybe they weren't any good, and they were never asked to come back. But there were some who appeared a lot of times. Here, for example, is an actor who appeared 80 times. And I'm going to use the new feature here of looking at just the uh, data grid to notice that the one actor who appeared in every episode of the original series was Leonard Nimoy. Now, why not, why not William Shatner? He was Captain Kirk. Yeah, the first one, the original pilot, uh, The Cage. Uh, all new, all new set of, uh, of cast, except for Leonard Nimoy, he came back. There's the cage. All right, well, let's go back to the, uh, to the data uh, profile pane view. Yeah, there's William Shatner. He, he had 79, uh, Captain Kirk himself. All right, and then I want to, uh, I want to do some additional calculation on this. I want to, uh, I want to group these based on the value. So I, I'm going to create another calculated field. And so this is going to be the actor role. I'm curious, you know, are they, are they a regular or were they just one time? So I'll say if, um, if the number of episodes per actor was one, then, then they're one time. Uh, but if it was less than about maybe five, then they're an occasional actor. Uh, if they were less than, say, 30, then they were a recurring character. And if they were more than that, then they were a regular cast member. So I've got a, uh, oh, then, yeah, I spelled that way. So I've got a calculation here that takes my level of detail calculation and builds upon that. So I've got the actor role, and I'll save that. And I get this field here that allows me to start to see you know, who were the occasional actors, who were the one-time actors. And I've started to create a data set that now when I go to do analysis, I've got some additional attributes of the data that, uh, that are all based on the entire data set, which is great. And even better, I've done it in one step. Instead of having to build out aggregation and self-joins and all that mess, I can do a lot of complexity right here. And it's, and it's not even that complex. It's very easy to go back and see how that was built. So that's, uh, that's everything I wanted to do with the actor. But I do also notice this, uh, this episode title here. Uh, the episode title is all capital letters. I'm going to bring it over here to the front just so we can watch it. And because it's all capital letters, that can be a little bit hard on the eyes to, uh, to pay attention to. I'd like to make it title case. Uh, I'd like to transform that in some way. Now, Tableau Prep has a lot of string functions, regular expression functions, but it's going to be very painful to try to build out a title case function. It's got uppercase, lowercase, but no, t no function that just takes it directly to title case. So, I'm excited about this feature here, add script, the ability to use Python or R in Tableau Prep. And with Python, which is what I'm going to choose to use, I have the ability to connect to my, my Python server, which is just my local host, and the port here, and I'll sign in. 
And once I've signed into my server, I can have a script file. So here's my script, this uh, Python script.py. I'm really original on naming there. Let's take a look at it, not because we care too much about Python, but just because it's kind of fun to see. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got the function that I'm going to call, which is to title case. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the data set, which is a data frame object here in Python, and it's going to take the episode title and apply this function uh, across that column. So this function has a list of exception words that don't get, uh, don't get an uppercase letter if they're, if they're not the first word. Uh, and then it's going to split it out and loop through word by word and capitalize the ones that it needs to. Uh, so no need to fully understand that. I'm not a Python expert, but I figured it out enough to do that. And, uh, and so I select that file, and then I tell it the function name, which is that two title case that I want to call. As soon as I press enter, watch the episode title here. Watch what happens. Tableau applies the Python function and everything is now nicely title cased. A is capitalized only when it's the first uh, word of the title, but of and the did not get title cased, but every other word did. So really nice. Uh, and I've just barely scratched the surface. You could use this for predictive analytics. In fact, you could take a data set of all the Star Trek deaths and all those people who ever appeared on Star Trek and do some predictive analysis to figure out is it really true that red shirts die more frequently? Or is that just because there were more people wearing red shirts that we saw on screen, period? Maybe it's not statistically valid. You could have build some incredible models in Python to, uh, to figure out that question. I'm going to close out Tableau Prep, and we've got one final feature to, uh, to consider here today, and that is parameter actions. Now, this is not new, new, but it was released in this last year, 2019.2, and it's one that I am incredibly excited about because it is so powerful. With parameter actions, I can take any view, and I can start to, uh, to think through how to use that view to, uh, to work through it, and, and I can take that view and create an action that changes a parameter value. So if I were to... Uh, to click on a bar in this view, I could change the value of the parameter. So here uh, I click on Janus 6, and that becomes the value in that parameter uh, value. Whoa. All right, there we go. And then if I were to click on X03, it would populate the parameter with that value. Whoa, we lost it completely. Let's see what's going on. There we go. All right, so I had clicked on, on that bar. I click on that bar. And it doesn't have to be a click function. I could do it on hover. I can set up the action just like I would any other action. But the power of that is that when I populate a parameter value, I can use it anywhere. I can use it throughout the entire workbook. It's not limited to a single data source. Uh, it's, it's available for everything. So I can use it in calculations. And that allows me to do all kinds of things, like control filters. And that's powerful because I can actually filter the same view that triggered the action, which is kind of fun. But I can filter any other view that I want in the entire workbook. I can control labels and titles and captions. I can control any visual attribute that I want. I can create a calculation based on the parameter value and then put that on color or shape or size. And, and I can dynamically change every view in the workbook or any view that I want. I can do what if analysis. So what if uh, dilithium production the goals were set based on the value for one of these planets. Well, I click that, and I can start to see who's over that, who's under that. Uh, I could have a timeline and say, if I were to click on this point in time, how does every other point in time relate to that in terms of the percent difference? All kinds of possibilities. I can move reference lines. 
And so you click on something and now the reference line is based on your click. I can control filters and sets. I can change the size of bins. How many of you have used uh, measure names, measure values in views before? And then how many of you have been frustrated that you don't know which measure someone wants to focus on or, or you want to be able to use that in another view? Well, you can pass the name of the measure now to the parameter and then you can change views based on which measure they selected. So all kinds of fun things that you can do there. How about this one? This one's dangerous. Call Scotty in for this one. But you can use it in dynamic SQL. That is, I could set up a SQL statement for my data connection. I could parameterize it with a parameter. And then based on how someone's clicking on a bar chart or a scatter plot, I can change the SQL statement, requery the data, and come back with totally different results. Kind of crazy, maybe a little dangerous, but you could do some incredible things with that. Now, I looked at all of this and I thought, wow, there's so much that you could do that would be relevant to business and organizations, and you could do all the uh, profit ratios that you wanted, and, but I don't want to do that. I want to uh, make a game. So I love making games in Tableau. I've made things like Blackjack or Battleship or Tic-Tac-Toe. But the one game that, uh, that I had in my mind that I wanted to make was Minesweeper, but I couldn't ever figure out how to make it until parameter actions. Because I knew I needed three things. I knew I needed data. Tableau is a data drawing tool. It, uh, it requires data, but I could get data anywhere. I could even make my own. So that wasn't a problem. But I did need the ability to trigger an action on the same view. So if I click one of these uh, squares on the Minesweeper sweeper board, I need the Minesweeper board to update itself. Uh, there are some workarounds and some hacks, but none of it was really all that fun to try to do. Uh, and the final thing was I needed to keep a history of clicks. So if you click on the upper right square and then you click on the lower left square, I need to know that you've clicked both of those squares. So a simple filter doesn't do that. I can click on one thing and the, uh, the filter filters it out uh, or excludes it. Uh, but then if you click something else, it's going to forget that you had something else filtered. It's going to change the filter instead of keeping a history. But parameter actions allowed me to do those last two things. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through my thought process in building Minesweeper uh, at, at sort of a, a high level. We're not going to get down into the detail too much, hopefully. Uh, but I will, at some point, put this out on my blog, and uh, you can download it and dive into that detail, and feel free to ask questions. Uh, and you can also learn some uh, techniques along the way that you can take and use in your, uh, in your organizations. So the data. Now, this was, this was the easy part, uh, especially when I found this guy named Dan Q. He has this really cool random Minesweeper generator, and that gives me all the data that I need. I can tell it how many columns and rows and how many mines I want, and then it just generates board after board after board. And I can, uh, I can take that and copy it and paste it into a data source that Tableau likes, something like Excel. And I needed some additional data. <coughs> I needed to be able to identify one of the squares, so I gave it a row and a column name, and, uh, and then I gave it a board number so that I could have lots of different boards in the data, in, the, in a single data set. And then I, I started to think through how the game would work. Well, if I click on most of these squares, uh, I just need to track that square, but there are some squares, like this one, for example. If you click that one, then actually that ends up in the game of Minesweeper revealing all of these squares. So all of those squares need to be revealed. So I needed some way to associate all those empty spaces with, with, uh, with each other and with the squares that are uh, surrounding them. So I took the, uh, the data set and, and added a little bit more. I gave each one of those blank spaces a letter so that I would know that all the A's belong together and all the B's belong together and C's and D's. And then the squares that are next to them, uh, that, are, that are numbered, I just added the letter to those. And then there are a few squares that get a couple of letters if they border both. But that way, if I click one of the Bs, uh, I'll know which squares need to be shown. 
So that was the data set that I, that I built out with, uh, with just a few boards to start with. And then I looked at that and I said, well, that's not exactly the way that Tableau wants to see the data. But I have Tableau prep, so not too hard to clean it up. I just pivot it so that I can take all those columns to rows. I duplicated the data for, so I'd have a top and a bottom because the top needs to show you nothing until you click on it and then we'll reveal what's beneath. Until finally I had a data set like this, a single row for every square, for every board, and then duplicated for top and bottom. And if you were a top square, then I, I gave it a value that it would append to the parameter value. So if you click on an A, then what I'll do is I'll look at the second column to see what all matches that A and reveal all of those squares. If you click one of the, uh, one of the other squares, I just gave it a unique ID and, and then we'll have to find out what matches that to reveal it. And the basic idea then is this in Tableau. If you click one of the squares that is just uniquely identified, then it adds it to the string of the parameter and it reveals just that one. And if you click another square, then it appends it to the string and it reveals what's beneath. And then if you click one of the, uh, one of the blank ones, then everything that matches B is going to be revealed and so on and so on. But enough of looking at it in PowerPoint, who wants to see it in Tableau? Yeah. All right, so here it is. I'm not even gonna put it in a fancy dashboard or anything. We'll just play it right here as a Tableau view. And you can see this, this is Tableau itself. So you'll see as I click on the squares, it's gonna build out a string. A little bit of more complexity is that I have to be able to place some flags too, but let's see how I can do. So I'll click. And I'll click again and again. There we go. Now I can start placing some flags. Hmm, not very helpful. There. There. And I can place more flags. And so you can see it's just a single view. It's building out the strings. And as I build out the strings, I just keep going and go, oh, and I hit a mine. And it reveals all the mines. So I'll put this out on my blog and, uh, and you can actually download it. I'll publish it to Tableau Public and you can dive into it and see even more detail about how it was built and constructed. But it's a great feature opening up all kinds of possibilities, an entire universe of possibilities. So we have these new features, and we, we learn them, we explore them, find them. What do we do with them once we've discovered them? Well, first of all, use them. I mean, that seems kind of obvious, but I have to remind myself to do that too, because vector maps were released. Do you know how many times I've thought about using vector maps? Not near enough. There's all kinds of fun things that you could do with vector maps. So use these new features uh, as you can and as it makes sense. And then play with them. Push the limits. See what you can do. Take it outside of your normal day-to-day -day work and see what kind of fun you can have with them. And then you can go back and apply it where it makes sense uh, in your day-to-day -day job. And then also make sure you provide feedback to Tableau. The Tableau developers love to hear from the customers. They want to know what works, what doesn't work, what else you'd like to see. So join that pre-release program. Run through the scenarios that they give for you and then take the surveys and send them an email and tell them, hey, it uh, doesn't quite work the way that I want it to or this is great but I also need it to do this. They listen and it impacts the way that they develop Tableau. And finally, submit some new ideas. Uh, there is, on the community forums, there is a new ideas uh, place. You, can, uh, you may look at a new feature and say, this is a great feature, but I wish it would also do this, or, or it makes me think that the Tableau would be even better if there was this feature. Well, you can, uh, you can add your ideas there, and you can also vote for ideas that you think are, are helpful that other people have already submitted. And that helps the developers 
know what's important to the community. Who knows? You might be responsible for the next generation of Tableau. I think we might have a little bit of time for Q and A. Anyone have any questions? Yes. Sorry, say that one more time. Which version of Windows? Of Windows. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm using version 7. So I'm up to date on Tableau, not up to date on my OS. Yeah. I, I keep up to date on the important things. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, so, so every mark type, including, including marks on maps, are, are animated. The only one that's not currently is, is a pie chart uh, mark type. So that's the only one that's not animated, but everything else will be animated, and there are options for adjusting the speed of the animation, turning it off for a certain view or for the entire workbook. There, there are a lot of options for that. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, no, that's, that's a great question. The question was, is it, is it by default that it's appending these values to, to the parameter, or is that something that, that you have to do? And, and the, the wish is that we could have parameters like arrays. Well, that's a great one for the ideas section there, so submit that one, because no, that's not the default way that parameters work. Usually, if you click a mark, it's gonna change the parameter value, and if you click it again, it's gonna change it again. So what I had to do was I actually had to create a calculation that built that out. So you can see here, I, it's got a little bit of additional logic, so if you click on a flag, it's not gonna do anything, but otherwise, it's actually building out the string and then and appending it to itself and then writing it back out to the parameter. So, so a little bit of additional logic there to get that append kind of, a, kind of an action. Great question. Yes? Um, is the uh, rep range different for the parameter? Does that, does that have Okay, so the question is, is the rank in prep, which was shown at Devs on Stage, is there a, is there a date for release? No, there's not an official one. I mean, I, I'm hoping it's as soon as possible, but they haven't told me. And uh, probably if you ask them, they won't commit to anything. But, but I, think it's, I think it's close. Yeah. Okay, uh, here in, in the front. I could, yeah, so the question is, is can I control the path of the animation? So the marks have very specific animations. You see the bars sort of grow and shrink, or they appear if they weren't there before. Uh, other marks have different ways of animating. Um, the, the way of controlling the path or the movement is based on the data. So, so it's going to move based on, on the data and based on how the filters or, or everything else is, is changing the pages. So you could build out a data set that determined a path, uh, but there's nothing, there's no option that says always move this mark down here or, or anything like that. Good question. And then there was one other question back there. Yeah, so the question was about the Python scripts for Tableau prep. Is there, is there a way to host it on the server? Where do you put the Tableau script, or the Python scripts? Uh, you do have to have uh, the TabPy server up and running uh, somewhere that the Tableau server or can access it if you're gonna publish the flow to Tableau server. Here, I didn't worry about that, I just, I just had it up and running locally. Uh, but if you were to publish the flow to Tableau server, yes, you would, you would either need to install it there 
or IT may say, no, we don't want to install that on the tablet server, but we have another box where you can install it. And as long as, as, long as you can, uh, as long as they can communicate with each other, it's fine. And then the Tableau script itself, or the Python script itself, I would have to double check, but I believe that it would get packaged up with the flow, and, and that's how that would work. Not 100% sure on that, but that's, that's my thought. Great, great question. All right, yes. Yeah, great question. Is there a recording feature for the animation? Not that I know of, other than you can, you know, you can publish it with the pages control and, and someone can press play, so, so in a sense recorded. But otherwise, no. In fact, what, I've, what I did for PowerPoint there was I used another application to capture a, a screen recording of, of the animation. Great question. Yes? It is... So here's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna not know the answer right off. It will be if it's not available, I think it already is available, like on Tableau Public, Tableau Online, I think, um, Tableau Server possibly, but if it's not, then it will be soon. I know that they've announced that. I'm just not sure if they've already released it or not. Yeah, so, so it, it does take care of the issue of, of page shelf not showing. Uh, page, the, the page shelf animation is, is or soon to be released uh, will be uh, available on, on every platform, whether it's online or tablet server or public. All right, well, you have been a great audience. This is no longer gonna be in reruns. It, the show is now canceled, unfortunately. But if you loved it, or even if you didn't, please do fill out that survey. Uh, I would love to get your feedback and to know uh, what you thought and where I can improve. Thank you. Viz long and prosper.